Depression seems to be a common problem in leftist circles. When I gained class consciousness, I realized things that ended up hurting me to a level of pain that makes me contemplate whether being alive is worth it. It's the realization that what makes this world a horrible place is a system that is entirely unnecessary. A system that robs us of most of our day's time, our energy, and our humanity. A system that makes it near impossible to self-actualize or enjoy life without being hindered by wage slavery. I'm comfortable now saying publicly that I've suffered with suicidal thoughts and tendencies for a long time. During my junior year of high school, I seriously contemplated and planned hanging myself due to a lack of friends and residual pain from a lifetime of bullying. Now I'm here as a graduate who realizes that they didn't really have a childhood, and looking towards the future, realizes that adulthood most likely isn't going to make up for such a loss. A lack of friends isn't terribly difficult to fix, but escaping the mental health issues that arise from working under capitalism is an entirely new magnitude of difficult. Sadly, I am not here to give answers. If I was, I wouldn't be so willing to kill myself. Instead, this video is going to analyze what causes depression under capitalism and will look at mental health issues as an environmental problem. There are a few main factors that cause people to be depressed. Three prevalent ones are feeling that you or your work or efforts are meaningless, feeling trapped or unable to escape a problem, and feeling that a problem is outside of your control. The first of these has to do with meaning. When a person's labor or existence in society isn't valued, they will end up coming to the conclusion that their future existence either isn't wanted or necessary. It's why a lot of depressed people consider themselves a burden, sometimes even blaming themselves and reminiscing on problems which make their condition even worse. Capitalism, in its current practice, does exactly the kinds of things that can cause these problems. It does not fully appreciate the labor of its workers as they are not fully rewarded for their toil. Not only is surplus value extracted from them, meaning they don't get the full worth of their work, but additionally, their pay doesn't keep up with inflation nor production output. Of course, pay isn't everything. Someone can easily decide that a low-paying job is worth it as long as it is fun or meaningful. Problem is, work under capitalism isn't meaningful either. Putting aside the existence of bullshit jobs, workers under capitalism are alienated from their own labor. They are alienated from their production, product, and their species essence. While capitalists do not value labor, the same goes for the laborer. A capitalist doesn't need you specifically. They just need someone who can perform similar tasks to you. This leads them to treat mildly difficult employees, such as union organizers, as easily replaceable nuisances. Nobody likes being arbitrarily let go. But when businesses realize that reducing labor costs increases profits, your interests in the security of your job are no longer valued by the person who has control of said security. The second thing that causes depression is the feeling of being trapped or being unable to escape an issue or problem. Putting aside that moving to a better country or state for most people is unrealistic, capitalism isn't a problem we can run away from. No matter if you move to Germany or Denmark, Vietnam or China, you will not be able to move away from capitalism. The ability to bail from an uncomfortable situation is important for one's mental well-being as it does not force them into situations that can deteriorate their mental health. Sadly, this system is something we cannot bail from. Capitalism is not voluntary. It constantly has a gun to your head that forces you to work to survive. If you decide not to participate, if you decide to bail, you have effectively surrendered your life in capitalism. This requirement of work to survive is also part of the reason that some people are forced into careers that they don't enjoy. A majority of workers are disengaged from their work, and it's for a damn good reason. When people are unhappy with their work, or want better wages for their time, it is not common that an alternative job opportunity will rise. People do not willingly pick bad jobs. They are there for reasons outside of their control. Speaking of control, a perceived lack of it is the third major factor that causes depression. In psychology, it is considered an external locus of control, which means that you believe your problems are due to factors outside of your control such as luck. In this case, that thing outside of your control is capitalism. Many people with an internal locus of control have tried to tell themselves that they can control their material conditions under capitalism, that if they just work hard enough, they will be okay. General statistics would disprove this. Around 60% of Americans made under $40,000 in 2017, and 50% of them made under $30,000. As an individual, these kinds of salaries would get you considered as low income in places where most of America's population presides. Considering how common it is for Americans to be low income, I have my doubts about people who say that working hard will allow you to escape this problem. 60% of Americans certainly aren't lazy. That's ridiculous. 
there is a different problem afoot, and that's capitalism. Problem is, our efforts might not be effective enough to make people feel that they have control over their capitalist problems. Even just small incremental things like starting unions or electing politicians and presidents that support the working class is difficult, let alone seeing more active means like direct action do more than help the leftist media presence. We may fight, but workers still have to suffer in the meantime, which can get discouraging. Your will to live shouldn't have to originate from the struggle against what stole it in the first place. To explain this better, I'll use an analogy. If you're in an abusive relationship, your life's meaning shouldn't have to be about leaving it, putting up with it, or reliving it when it's over. It should be about living beyond abuse. Same goes for capitalism. It is depressing to make one's entire life about fighting the system that abuses them when their life could be about flourishing from the absence of said system. Nobody's meaning should have to come from fighting what abuses them. Their meaning should come from self-actualization and true fulfillment. This does not mean I'm against direct action, but I do have my critiques. We are in a system where change is intentionally slow, and this will inevitably kill us, both mentally and physically. We are in time-sensitive situations that unveil the weaknesses of politicians taking their time or trying to be civil while their constituents inhabit a living hell. I'm not here for gradualism, nor am I here to fight a long time for changes that will be rolled back instantly. I do not mind being a communist, but I want the ideas of our comrades to matter. Considering how much the realization of our suffering hurts, I'd hate to see this system live long enough for someone else to have to feel the same way. As someone who likes to dabble in psychology, I happen to have my own opinions about certain arguments within the subject, one of those being nature vs nurture. The argument over whether or not your genetics are more or less important in determining your behavior than the environment you were raised in. While I acknowledge that certain behaviors will arrive from your genetics, such as likelihood of schizophrenia and type of temperament, it is my opinion that generally, how you were raised, and more importantly, your environment, will affect your behavior more than genetics. This is what leads me to come to the theory that mental health problems, and in this case specifically, depression, are environmental issues. Again, I do acknowledge that chemical imbalances exist, and that some people need lithium to equalize levels of phosphorus and sodium in the brain, but for many other people, this might not be the case. Curing depression isn't easy. Like dreams, psychologists admit they don't entirely know what happens on a neurological level when these things occur. This might be because we are trying to look at depression as purely a neurological process, or something we can cure the same way we would a physical illness. Certainly, it is simpler and easier to fix an individual than the environment they preside in. A therapist won't be able to change your material conditions, nor is any brand of depression medication. While they may allow you to look at the situation differently, it ultimately won't change the environment you're in. During the economic crisis of 2008, and for some time after, there was a spike in suicides, upwards of around about 10,000 of them. This is not a coincidence, and studies that have analyzed larger periods of time were able to find a correlation between rising unemployment rates and a higher risk of suicide. As I said already, people don't like being arbitrarily let go by being fired, so it makes sense that their mental health can spiral downwards as unemployment becomes a problem for them. We are trapped in this environment. It's either unemployment and the suicide that follows, or actually having a job and suffering alienation while surrendering your humanity just to be given the capitalist privilege of being allowed to live. As I said at the beginning of this video, I don't have solutions. I really wish I did, because if that was the case, I wouldn't mentally be in this place right now. This all just happens to be my best understanding of the problem at hand, and how it may be affecting other people. I did not suffer during my childhood only to be given an adulthood that forces me to deal with even greater problems when all I want to do is recover. While I still have some hopes for the future that might save me from some of the emotional problems I associate with capitalism, I feel as if I'm dangling my life by thin threads. If I am to look forward to a life of alienation and capitalist subjugation, then I don't want a life to look forward to at all.